Ready, set, go. Lesson five. Don't break the chain. In the ready section, we're asked to indicate where we see the rate of change on the table and on the graph. On the graph, from point to point, we can see we're going up three and over one. We continue doing that from point to point. That is the slope. Slope is the change of y divided by the change of x. In the table, as we go from point to point or number to number, we're going up three. And in the n or the x column, up one. And there's our slope. Our slope is three to one or just three. In our next table and graph, we're going down, down two and right one. So the slope is negative two and you can see it in the table. We're going from 13 down to 11, down two and plus one. There's the slope. And here we're going down one, two, three, four, five, and over one consistently, down five and over one. This also has a negative five as a slope. In the table, we're going down five and up by one. Now we're back to a positive slope. We're going up four and over one, a positive four and a positive one, up four, and up one. Four over one. What kind of a sequence is this? It is geometric. We're going to figure out the recursive, the explicit. We're going to graph it. And we're going to label the axes. So we're going up two, up two to four and up eight. It's not a common difference, it's a common ratio. So remember, any number divided by the one that came before it is gonna show you the common ratio. These are just numbers divided by the ones that came before them. So the common ratio is two. The recursive is that the next equals two times the previous. The explicit is the first number, two times the common difference or common ratio, two to the n minus one. And the graph, I can start it anywhere I want to. Now I'll go by twos, that'll be one, two, three, four, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, one was at two, two was at four. Three was at eight. And by the time we get to four, we are off the graph. We are up here somewhere. So definitely not a straight line when you graph a geometric. On number six, <coughs> Claire is starting with $300 and she's gonna take out half. When she takes out half, that is a common ratio of one half most students like to work with the decimal 0.5. So I take next equals half times previous or 0.5 times previous. Explicit would be the first number times the common ratio. I'll use the decimal this time to the n minus one. On my graph, I can scale it any way I want to. 
So what I think I'm going to do is every four, let's see, every four, should that be a hundred? No, very, yeah, let's do that. Every four is a hundred. So that's 100, 200, 300. And then we'll do every two this way. So she's starting at day one with a hundred dollars, three hundred dollars. And then she takes out half. So she has a hundred and fifty left. Day two and day three, she's got half of that, 75. On day four, even half of that. So again, a curve coming down. Day seven, or problem number seven, day one has six to start with. Uh, F of N equals six. And n equals 1. And then we double. So you can see this is 6 twice. So this is 12. Actually, let me write f of 1 here. And then we doubled again. This is going to be 24. Um, this is 8 times 3. So f of 3 is 24. The common ratio is 2. But we're starting at 6. So the recursive is next is 2 times previous. The explicit f of n is start at 6, go up by doubling to the n minus 1. So this has got to get up to 24 pretty fast. Let's do this. Let me go. Um, every two is 10. 10, 20, 30, that'll work. 40, 50, 60, 70. I See how far I can go here. One, two, three. So start at day one, I'm at six. Day two, I'm at 12. Right about there. Day three, I'm at 24. And by day four, I'm at 48. I think that's as far as I can go on this graph. Use the middle column to write the process or number patterns that relate the input to the output, then create both recursive and explicit function rule. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, this one would be, again, you're going multiplying by 2 every time. So by the time you got to here, you have started with 3, and you multiplied by 2 uh, how many times? 1, 2, 3 times. I'm just going to backtrack this up to here. And I'm going to write this as 2 to the 0, just to show you that when you don't multiply by 2, that 2 to the 0 must be a 1, because 3 times 1 is 3. Because this is 1, 2, and then 2, 2s, and then 3, 2s. So that just shows you that the power on the 2s is trailing the n value by 1. So 
So the f of n is start at three, multiply by two, and trail it by one. This is next is two times previous. And our last one here, on the ready se section, this is multiply by three. So um, we're gonna start at nine. Well, actually on this one, the n value is two where we start. So what we could do is we could say, um, this is nine times three to the zero. Then you have nine times three to the one, nine times three to the two, nine times three to the three. And actually the n value is ahead of the power by two. So if we took and made it equal to, um, we could go nine times three to the n minus two even. That would work. Next equals three times previous. All right, in our go section, for the following problems, two points are given. Plot the points, plot and label these points on the graph. Connect them and draw a right triangle. I'm just gonna do one of these. Um, so it's sort of up to me where I put this graph. Not too accurate, sorry about that. Uh, negative three, zero would be right about here. And zero, five would be one, two, three, four, five, right about here. If I draw a slope triangle between them, I'm going up, how far? Five and over three. So change of Y over change of X would be five thirds. I'm gonna leave the rest of those problems to you. See you next time.